Are you very hungry though? Do you not want to eat your shoe? Friends are looking tasty though. Surely they are edible. No, 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 no. Monster, monster, monster cooking the monster. Cooking the monster is proudly presented by Herbert, Matt, and History. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Tabletop Dynasty Stall. Uh, we're about to launch into Cooking the Monster, which is the latest series that comes out weekly on Tabletop Dynasties. This is short six-minute episodes where in each episode we look into how to break down a monster in serviceable choice cuts of meat and prepare it and flavor it. This is all done with the help of myself, Matt Lee, who is unfortunately absent, and Kistrix of the Wildwood Apothecary. Apothecary, that's wild with a Y. Uh, and today we're going to sit down and talk to you about how to break down a chimera into perfectly choice cuts of meat and how to flavor it and how to deal with it as an edible option. So, and make it absolutely delicious. There are a bunch of different types of chimeras out there in the wild and the wilderness just running around. So we need to firstly address what type of chimera it is. Is it a magical abomination created by the gods? Is it a magical abomination created by various archmages in the wilderness who are creating these chimerical creatures, just a snake's tail, a lion's head, a goat's leg, uh, some wings from a random creature? Because it's going to change the flavor of it as well and how you cook it. And I reckon it's going to give it way different properties to the meat. Well, how are they? Are they red-blooded? Are they... Uh, are they red-blooded? They have various other bloods. Are they white meat or are they red meat? Like when all these meats come together and the blood is pumping through the body, it starts to intrinsically change the flavor and texture and consistency. Also, there's a huge difference between dealing with, say, the scales on uh, the snake skin and yeah. then the fur of, um, say, a goat's hindquarters and removing them all as one piece. You can assume when you find your chimera that you can address each part of it as you would that individual animal. And at least when it comes to killing it and then breaking it down, you'll be able to separate it into its component parts and then treat each one of those animals separately uh, before deciding what you want to do with the various types of meat. Because you might have things, you, know, you might have like fatty deposits in the body of a bear that's attached to mm -hmm. the relatively lean composition of a reptilian form. Because I think you can do more than one dish as well. Like, it doesn't have to be one meal. No, no. And it's typically, chimeras you can make a whole are... make banquet. They're large creatures, right? They're, 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 and a large creature means that it's occupying, like, a 10 by 10 foot square. Uh, yeah. That's enough meat for a whole bunch of ordinary humanoids to, to eat. Mind you, if you're cooking for a giant... Yeah. That would be a, a different scenario. Maybe a bit of a snack. Yeah, a bit of a snack <laughs> or, or, or one meal. Um but also, it's important to consider the origins of the chimera because yeah. some chimeras, if they have been generated by corrupt or evil gods, then they will have taints to them, either maybe celestial taint or maybe a necrotic taint if a necromancer has put them together. Now, we have had an episode, uh, we do have an episode coming up on the undead and how to deal with either meaty undead or skeletons. So Definitely my favorite so far. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you will be able to go into more detail then, but right now we'll assume we're talking about the living, breathing chimera. So, the other type of chimeras are chimeras that have been made by mages. So, conventional magic goes into combining all of these different animals into a single creature. Um, and they would be cleaner or freer of some kind Very of taint. Uh, or perhaps after several generations of interbreeding, uh, a chimera could generate chimerical children that are free of the taint. Lastly, there might be some naturally occurring chimeras out there that would be the cleanest and the easiest to get your hands on. With the magically created chimera, mm, mm, mm. I think te like conventional cooking methods aren't going to work particularly well because if they're, if they're magically created, the bonds that hold them together, we're not maybe looking at things like proteins and carbohydrates so much we're actually looking at like magical properties that hold well, the meat uh, that's interesting that means together. that when it comes to preparing the meat if you cast a simple dispel magic spell on the chimera you might be able to weaken its bonds so much that the creature just falls to pieces yes what, what really excites you about the idea of preparing a chimera i'm really excited about preparing it like a to ducken the like chimera to duck it. The chimera to duck so it. a chimera to duck it. Yeah. 
So that's where you take the smallest animal. Smallest animal and stuff it inside the next largest animal and then the next largest animal and so forth. So this chimerical turducken could have like a snake inside of a goat, inside yes. of a lion, uh, inside or impressively wrapped in the it wings would, of an eagle. It would be like a flavor something. rainbow. It's going to be like a flavor That'd rainbow. That'd be pretty amazing, but that would create some challenges, I imagine, when it comes to actually preparing the meat because you'd have like white meat and dark meat. Definitely. I think you also need to consider as well that some of the meats are going to cook at different rates as well. Mm -hmm. So some of those meats, for example, goat is better off in a casserole. You yeah. need to be cooking it with the bones as well, like in tradition. So really better off in a slow cooked yeah, environment. Yeah, slow cooked environment. So you want to be focusing those kind of animals to the center of the tadakan. Okay. And then building out to the outside. Okay, so the whole thing will roast coherently. But there's a lot of flavor challenges then when it comes yeah. to dealing with such a, a broad spectrum. I mean, look, the benefit of the turducken, I mean, the benefit of the chimera is that because it has so many different creatures and often multiple heads that are on the end of mobile appendages, it's at least very good at cleaning itself. So you can yeah. expect the chimeras to have a, a pretty good standard of personal hygiene. So still prestidigitation, but even if you don't have prestidigitation, a simple clean down would be able to yeah. get rid of most things, most Definitely. harmful bacteria. There are some of them that will have poison glands, like if you have snake yeah. parts or toad parts, you can have poisonous components. So, cleansing poison will be Yeah, cleansing poison really or, important. Uh, because they are compartmentalized chimerically, it is easy to remove those as well. Yeah. And so flavoring, kistrix, well, yes. what, what, what do you think? Okay, so I've got, a, I've got a few different flavoring options for the chimera and I think it kind of depends what type of animal that you're, what kind of head that you're dealing with as well. Okay. Um, but one of the things that I thought was really important was that the chimera has dark vision. Really? Okay. Yeah. So was, what does that imply? So that they can see in the dark for 60 feet. Okay. And working with something like bilberry, so yeah. it's, it's, it's related to things like cranberry, uh, so it's got a very tart kind of flavor. Okay. So you can, with a lot of meat roasts, you can add things like cranberries and berries to flavor it. So I'd be going with a the bilberry there. So that's a uh, bikini okay. mertillus. Okay, and you think the, the, the tartness of the cranberry would cross a lot of different flavor groups? I think so. Yeah, excellent. I think some of the some of the different animals that make up a chimera can be quite gamey as well. So we can actually go with a very tart berry even okay. something verging on sour would be okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it could really yeah. take it well i guess you'd have to then focus what would be the most overpowering flavor coming out of the meats do you think a sweeter meat or do you think a more gamey meat would... i think i think the gamey meats because of the more, the more, more chemicals in a gamey meat to yeah. run a leaner body and you think those flavors would overtake yeah i think well, they're going to be the overtaking ones what about a it. pig I mean, as soon as you throw Ooh. that kind of like pork style white meat into the mix, yeah. everything can often just taste like bacon, right? Yeah, I um, would be going with something maybe with celery with that okay. one. Um, so you can actually use with uh, celery, so that's APM graviolans. You can actually use a mixture of the celery plant, like the stalks and the leaves, mm -hmm. and making that into something like a stew. Yep. Um, but the other thing is celery seed is an absolutely amazing flavor ingredient. Okay. So celery is uh, related to parsley as well. Mm -hmm. So you're getting that, you're getting those herbaceous seasoning flavors coming through. But the seed is a little bit stronger. So if you wanted to give a bit more punch rather than just bacon. <laughs> now I find that, that uh, celery can sometimes be a very overpowering flavor to add to a meal, particularly when you're talking about a chimera. If you want to sort of add go that. with the leaves. So just adding the leaves yeah, and just you, go with the, the seeds leaves. are not as pungent. Yeah. Oh, the seeds are pretty punchy. Okay. The seeds are punchy. So if you wanted to add more flavor, if you like more flavor, I'm uh, going to something uh, like going growing with the seeds. You can grind those up. You can put in a powder. You can uh -huh, do a rub uh -huh. into the meat. Wow. Yeah. But if you wanted less flavor, just go with the leaves. They're really subtle. Um, traditionally. Uh, Celery leaves are used in a lot of um, like Italian cooking as well, yep, like when you're yep. making up a bolognese. So maybe we could do a chimera bolognese. Chimera bolognese would probably yeah. be a really good way because like, there's no better way to deal with a whole bunch of multi meats than to just grind them all up into a single. I and mean, that's how the, the humble hot dog came about and possibly a burger. And you know what? Yeah, you could do a burger as well. And uh -huh. with the mincemeat, I think we can we can hide some veggies in there for the younger adventurers in the party. Yeah, too. just to you know bring in those extra vitamins <laughs> exactly. and minerals. What about something like a like a southern kind of like spice 
Well, like kind of like a Cajun chicken. Cajun. We could do yeah, something yeah, Cajun yeah. as like well. Like an old gumbo, right? I mean, chimerical gumbo would be pretty awesome. Ooh, because I mean, a gumbo be is classically a boiled dish that's slow oh, cooked gumbo. over a long love period it. of time love until it, everything it, softens. It. And really, it would completely add a strong flavor to a lot of different textures and really create a very interesting mix. And when, with those Cajun spices as well, they're really great anti-inflammatory herbs. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah they're awesome. really good. And they're really good for the digestive system. So I think like some of the things that we're going to be eating out mm. in the world are going to be a little bit tough and we kind of, yeah. we need to support our tummies a little bit. Yeah, soften those things. <laughs> yeah, so Keep that's really good. Wraps. And also adding in something like a cinnamon and verum as well, okay. that's nice and warming. And, and what you will a cinnamon and verum do? So that's a warming spice and it's a okay. circulatory stimulant. It's Again, also another a really, Cajun spice. Another ca Cajun spice used in a lot of yeah mm -hmm. in southern cooking and then uh it's also a really good digestive tonic as well so we're coming back to like supporting the digestive system on our harsh but what about deep frying Ooh. i mean look let's if we're talking about cajun food here like yeah, fried chicken is fry. one of the best things so we take our chimera and we break it in and break it up into its pieces and then we deep fry it right I that mean, would be delicious. That would be very <laughs> delicious. Again, you could use your Cajun fried chicken spices, just a yes. southern style. Yeah, you could, um, put it, you could put it in, um, you could do it as a rub or do it as a batter beforehand before uh -huh. you drop it in. And how would that affect the different meats? So if you deep fried, say, like a snake meat by comparison to a goat meat, I don't think something like a goat is really going to take it very well. I think maybe the snake could be quite mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, well, it's a very soft flesh, is the yeah. snake. So uh, I guess you'd have to be cooking. very quickly about, careful about Flash how quickly it. you deep fried that snake. Yeah. But if you do it at the right time and the right temperature, and, you know, you can create deep frying tools with prestidigitation. So... Uh, you know, uh, and this is where prestidigitation really comes into its own. Because you've got a chimera made of so many different types of animal, you really need so many different types of uh, cooking utensils Neither. to separate it into the cuts of meat that you want. And you'll separate a snake's skin in a completely different way that you'll take the skin off a lion, and yeah. you'll need to cut through various bones and other things. So just cutting it up and filleting fish, I mean, underwater chimeras, you probably come across them. I think um, the prestidigitation is going to be handy because you got to you're not going to be able to carry all the equipment with you as well. So you can't you can't expect to you know have all no. all the bits I mean, and unless you're well you equipped. Need. I'm sure there are some adventuring parties <laughs> out there whose life goals are to prepare the various monsters they find in the best way possible and they probably do carry a large amount of tools with them. I will be carrying a tool with me on Sunday. Uh -huh, I've got uh -huh. a tool ready. I have a prop. So, oh, so we should out. be excited for this game. <laughs> yes. uh, so we've got a game happening on Sunday afternoon uh, called Cook All Monsters. Um, Eat them all. It's inspired by our Cooking the Monster series and all of the characters in it will be trying to find, dissect and cook every monster in existence. Not within the one game. Oh, I'm, I'm excited. My character is so excited to eat. She's so hungry. Awesome. Well, that's been The Chimera, and we've been Cooking the Monster. If you want to check us out, we do weekly releases on the Tabletop Dynasties YouTube channel. There are six-minute episodes, and again, in each episode, we talk about a new monster and how to break it down into serviceable choice cuts of meat and how to flavor it. Thank you very much, Kistrix. That's okay. And we'll be back yeah, with hungry. Matley. We're going to be doing two more casts at the same time at about 2 p.m. at PAX. This has been a PAX exclusive for Cooking the Monster. Monster, monster.